Hello everyone, took me a second, haven't streamed in a while. I'll give a few seconds for folks to show up, and in the meantime I'll announce it. Um, the various channels. Meanwhile, if anybody who's showing up early wants to tell me in chat how audio is like, if there's anything broken, now's a good time. All right, announced on the sky, now on Mastodon. There we go. Hello. Bird in the ground, hey. Haven't streamed in a bit, but nice to see some, some folks I recognize. Um, okay, so how's audio, how's text, how's um, everything? Let's see, let's open a random file, make sure everybody can see that. Actually, it's a little silly to have the explorer on this side. I wonder if I can move it. Nice. Not quite what I wanted to happen. Hmm. Right. I think I want to move the enti this entire bar. Also, oh God, this moved. <laughs> hey Dimitri, yes, <laughs> it is last minute before freeze, but in my defense, most of the work was getting the like big package merged and we've got that. So now it's just a matter of sticking it into crypto TLS. <laughs> uh, so for context, the, the go freeze, um, uh, which is the period in which you can't land new uh, new code is um uh, Tuesday, something like that, uh the twenty second. Uh so yep. <laughs> this is me uh uh yep. Uh, oh light mode for streaming is actually a good idea. Um right, uh click. Oh wow, that's weird. Haven't used light light mode in a in a hot second. Uh Okay, I was trying to move uh, the uh, sidebar, uh, like this entire block to the right uh, so that it's not hidden by, so that the code is not hidden by my face. If anybody, aha, bingo. <clears throat> A little disorienting for me, but I think I can roll with it. Um, Okay, so what are we working on today? Um, as I was saying a, a second ago, I worked on um, landing an implementation of MLCAM, which we actually started uh, in, a, in a live stream here. Um, 
and this is the new package uh, and then there's uh, which got merged into the standard library and then here's um, a set of performance uh, improvements that primarily what I changed is the is where is the example uh, benchmark round trip. so before you would uh, generate the key and get byte slices for both things and then to decapsulate you would uh, decapsulate would take bytes and um, reparse the decapsula decapsulation key well now generate key returns a private key structure that has some of the work already done so that it doesn't have to redo all that expansion work when it does the, the decapsulation here and that has a nice very visible effect on the um, initiator side uh, here we have alice and bob because um this is a key exchange but unlike uh, elliptic curve diffie hellman which is symmetrical both sides basically do the same thing uh, they generate their own public key and they um, merge the other's public key with their private key. Uh, and that takes the same amount of time on both sides. Uh, a chem instead has a generate step, an uh, encapsulate step, which is uh, with generate generates a, a private key. Um, encapsulate generates a shared key and sends over what... Um, and a ciphertext to, uh, that can be decrypted, uh, decapsulated with the um, uh, private key. And then the one that generated the, the private key has to do the decapsulation. So here, to make round trips useful, we have Alice, which does key gen and then decaps, which would be the TLS client in, in TLS. And then we have Bob, which just, do, uh, just does a, uh, encapsulate. And indeed, you can see that in caps and Bob take the same time, while Alice takes as much time as a key gen and a decaps. And since we made decaps way faster uh, by piggybacking on some of the work already done in key gen, that saves 20% time on the initiator. Uh, something nice is that well, we're now going to integrate this into TLS. So for TLS, uh, we will do a key gen on the client send it over on the server if we support it do an encapsulation and then a decapsulation on the client if the server accepted the, um, the key exchange method it's a little weird because we need to support both this and regular x519 and we want to reuse work between the two um, there is a specification for how to do that and there is a approved proposal for uh, how we are going to do it in uh, in Go. So this already got approved, so we just need to make the CL, get it merged, um, and get it into Go123, which is freezing on Tuesday, as we said. Uh, so this is the um, specification. There's now a nicer way to look at... Um, there's now a nicer um, layout. Uh, construction is actually super simple. Oh, I love how short this document is. Um, and this is the hybrid X2519 and Kyber uh, key exchange that's um, uh, implemented by Chrome, uh, Google, Cloudflare, Firefox, even in, I think, nightly, maybe. Um, so we'll also uh, we'll first um, integrate it and then we'll try to test it against these uh, these implementations. Now um, doo -doo -doo, sure. we're going to read this properly in a second. These we can close. Let's see what I had written down here. Uh, We'll need a go debug opt out. Go debugs are ways to control behavior that might change between releases uh, and that you might want to opt out of. For example, will def default 
will move from defaulting to X2519 to defaulting to X2519 and Kyber. If for some reason that creates a problem for you, you can set the go debug to uh, turn it off, um, and that will tell you if the um, will help you debugging if that's the problem. If that's the problem, then you send you set curve preferences and. That way you don't actually rely on the go debug in production, that's the idea at least. The other nice thing about go de uh, debugs is that they remain uh, tied to the go mod file. So in your go mod, which is something that really catches people uh, by surprise, here is go123 because it's the standard library one. But if this was go122, um, the go debug would automatically default to off because even if you're using go123, if you write go122 here, it will try to behave as much as possible like go122. And since go122 didn't use the Kyber thing in crypto TLS, it will default it to not using it. Uh, then when you are, are ready, it allows you to split the upgrade of the go toolchain and the behaviors. So you upgrade to go123, and then on your uh, own timeline, at some point, you make a PR that switches from go122 to go123. If nothing breaks, great. If something breaks, you bisect with the go debugs, so you go to the to the page. We should really write a document about how we envision go version upgrades to happen. Like first you upgrade the toolchain, then you upgrade the version there. What if something goes wrong? How do you use the go debugs to figure out what went wrong? Uh, really something we should write. Well, yeah, that, that goes on to the list of things to write. Uh, I need a technical writer. Stream notes. How to upgrade go. There we go. Uh, also, um, if you're still using go 122, but you switch this to go on 1023, it will automatically download go 123 for you and try to use that, uh, which is neat. Now, um, don't we all need a, a technical writer? Yes, that's. That's fair. Um, I, maybe I should pay one though. Anyway, that's for another time, maybe for sometimes that we'll be talking about uh, open source maintenance. Now, crypto. Uh, we add support for crypto TLS on top of crypto internal ML chem, which is um, what we are talking about. Um, uh, the, the new package, the, which has this relatively simple API, but also is an internal package. So allows us to figure out if this is the right API for camps or not, and decide later. Uh, send both in the client hello. Yeah. Uh, performance override is a generate key that makes it. Yeah. Uh, um, curve preferences currently says. Um, the client will use the first preference as the type for its key share in TLS 1.3. This may change in the future. Curve, pref curve preferences is now a complete misnomer because in TLS 1.2 it was about elliptic curves. But by in TLS 1.3 it's about key exchanges, which includes, for example, a hybrid of X519 and Kyber, which is absolutely not a curve, but eh, we're stuck with the name. Uh, misnomers, exactly. Um, we'll not define a curve ID constant for it, but we'll add support to curve ID string for it. Uh, okay. Mm -hmm. Great, so we only do that if curve preferences is nil. All right, let's start. Um, let's see. Now, um, 
let's figure out what are the files we need to work on. Uh, it's probably going to be in Handshake Server TLS 1.3, Handshake Client TLS 1.3. Um, let's see what key agreement and key schedule are. Oh, I think I had started um, doing some some small changes for this. So, uh, crypto TLS Skyber. There we go. Yeah, there's just this work in progress commit. So let's fetch the days. Uh, let's compile uh, because just before the freeze, usually uh, everything changes. Um, and then Let's see. Uh, I've had removed just a couple things that were not relevant anymore. And I had started. Oh, right. Um, so uh, we reset to just before head. So we dropped that work in progress comment. This will take a second to come back. Uh, so key agreement is a file that's only about TLS 1.0 and 1.2. Uh, so it's not relevant to us because the um, it's structured for the TLS 1.2 uh, handshake, which has different ways to do round trips. Um, and I think nothing in here is relevant to uh, what we want to do for TLS 1.3, which instead is in key schedule. Functions necessary to compute the TLS 1.3 uh, key schedule. There we go. All right, expand level. This is right secret. These are all not about the. Here we go. So we have this stuff about curve for curve ID uh, and and so on. Um, Hi everyone who uh, who just joined. Um, um, there's a, qu a question about uh, whether I work for Google. I don't. Um, I'm now an independent open source maintainer. If you go to my uh, website, there's a link that explains a bit uh, how I work now, which is working pretty well. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, okay. Done. Okay, I think it will probably have compiled by now. Yep. So now we just need to reload go please. There we go. Okay, so we have these functions that go from the tie pretty strongly ECDH curve to curve ID, which is a bit of a problem uh, because uh, Right, we need to update this. Um, curve ID is now the. Named group, supported groups, maybe. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so huh, I wonder why the link didn't work. That's the same. Um, 
discover this the type of the other identifier for uh, uh, I guess a key exchange. Um, Um. Yeah, I leave the curve groups. <laughs> it both makes sense to reuse the the code points we are using for elliptic curves, but it's also deeply confusing. Um. Yes, yeah, so there was Alexander Twitter groups and renamed named group CRFC eight four four six section. Um, it was then also extended to other mechanisms such as um, hybrid post quantum cams. Okay, but then we have um, this, but that we don't want to expose it, uh, so we Um, Etheric uh, asks, what was the uh, hotkey to have it reflow the comment uh, to some line width? It's an extension, one of the very few that I keep enabled, uh, rewrap by STKB. Uh, um, you just bind it to a hotkey and it au automatically figures out where to do it based on the language. It's actually very, very good. It, um, yeah, it figures out the, um, okay, I don't care what chat, um, oh, interesting, you can't enable one without this, okay, sure, um, anyway, the, um, it's this extension. There we go. Yeah, the um, the reflow extension is something I use all the time because I care about how comment about writing good docs and good comments because then you know they're in the standard library, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I tweak them a lot, and every time I'm like, it's kind of a friction that pushes you to write fewer comments if then you have to manually um, redo it. Uh, instead, 
here you can just keep adding and then press the button and reflows paragraphs too. It's, it's very nice. Okay, so curve ID, if I remember correctly, had a stringer implementation. There we go. Uh, let's go check if stringer has a way to um, override the name for something. Uh, I just need the path name. Oh, come on. How do we fine? That one. Okay, so mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> lol. There we go. Okay, so we can add a line comment option here. Then we go to curve ID because I wanted to uh, still print if somebody runs string on the curve ID. Um, be, uh, because it might be uh, that they <coughs> Uh, that you have curve curve ID dot string on uh, some logs that you're generating, uh, and I want that to still um, print as the final version, so that if at any point we change it or whatever, it will stay the um, stay the same if we ever export it or something like that. Uh, so let's update the stringer tool. Okay, and then let's run generate. Where is it? Let's see if it worked. Yeah, nice. Sweet. Uh, and let's check that there's no other changes because maybe there was something else with that line comment. Uh, there wasn't. Great. Okay. Such a good tool. So that's for adding the code point. Now let's get back to figuring out where we plug it in. Uh, Um, hmm. Thank you for the nice words, Julga. Uh, okay, so this is done. This we copied what we needed from it. Okay, so construction. Uh, warning, motivation, we don't care. Abstract this one line, so let's leave this. Read this instantiate with x25519 and kyber768. Which, by the way, we don't have a kyber implementation, we have a mlchem implementation. But you can build kyber out of mlchem, not that you should, because if somebody reuses both a fake kyber built on top of mlchem and a real kyber with the same key, which I'm clear why that would happen, they would be able to distinguish um, between failures and non-failures because they treat the failure case a little differently and they're supposed to be um, indistinguishable. Uh, 
uh, it's not entirely clear what happens if this uh, implicit uh, rejection f leaks, but anyway, I I wouldn't expose a package that claims to be Kyber uh, that's based on MLChem, but here our keys are ephemeral, so we can be sure that how uh, they're used. So we can keep not change the MLChem package, just add an extra hash function uh, to turn it into Kyber. Um, Kyber is just the name, the original name. MLChem is the name that NIST, the um, uh, US organization that uh, does standards um, for cryptography, uh, gave it um, and made small changes. Uh, see, round three submission of the PQC. The key exchange value contains the concatenation of the client's X2519 key share and the client's public key. For the server share, the key exchange value contains a concatenation of and of, okay. And the shared seeker is calculated as the concatenation of. Okay, so we just concatenate X5519 and Kyber. Done. Uh, nice. Uh, the idea of hybrids like this is that if Kyber turns out to be broken, it's still as secure as X2519. But if quantum computers come, then X2519 will be broken, but Kyber might uh, still work because it's uh, post-quantum secure. And the reason we're doing this now is that we want to make sure that any TLS connection made today um, cannot be recorded today and then decrypted in 30, 50 years when uh, post-quantum computers might come. Uh, so that's the, the goal of what we're um, implementing here. And we're going to make it the default so that as soon as you upgrade to Go123, as, as long as you don't set um, curve preferences, it will just work out like that. Which reminds me to go change the comment on curve preferences. Um, will be using the ECH and check the password, and then default will be used. The client uh, will use the first preference as that type for its uh, key share and TLS from end. The default includes the X2519 Kyber768 draft um, hybrid post quantum key exchange. Um, I guess we don't need to document the fact that we send both. Um, yeah, I think that's enough. Uh, we need the go to bug, which is Okay, now um, let's see where this is used. Let's figure out where we need to go change things. So these are tests, this is just clone, we don't care. This is just clone again, this is, this is it. Uh, so if need fips, uh, Fips disables it, which sounds right. 
um, if config is nil or the length. I don't think we actually support config being nil this deep, but sure. Okay, so there's a supports curve. And so one possible choice is to just add it to default curve preferences here. Not a fan, because then if somebody adds the explicit code point, well, I guess it's undocumented, so if they break, it's their problem. But also, we want the behavior to be special when there's... So the annoying thing is that we currently document that the first one becomes the key share. But now we'll send two key shares, one for x5519 and one for the uh, hybrid, because most servers don't support the, um, uh, the hybrid and we don't want to cause um, um, an extra round trip, which is called the hello retry request, which happens when, um, when you want the other side to pick a different um, key share. So I guess we could make that special behavior the behavior of having the hybrid here. So we put the hybrid here. And if we encounter this, we send both. And what happens if you set it manually is completely undocumented because this is not exported. So once we make this public, we'll have to make this a little smarter. Uh, because, for example, if you put this and then this, probably means you want... Well, not really, because generating the X5519 key share is free because you have to generate it as part of the hybrid anyway. So I think now the, the right thing to do is probably just add the default here and the special behavior of when encountering this is to send them both. We really need to test, um, and I'm taking a note for this, uh, what happens with a hello retry request that didn't select uh, the hybrid and then selects it. Um, and what happens if you turn it off? Because I think you would want that to trigger on a hello retry request. So yeah, um, disabled and not. Okay, we'll also have to um, add a switch based on the go debug. Mm. Actually, let's do that now. Uh, we'll call this uh, tier sky that. There we go. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think eventually we'll need to test what happens if this is enabled, but, but this isn't. But for now, since the only way to enable this is to select the default, I think it's fine. Um, okay. Now, mm, let's see the places where curve preferences are used, because that's probably where we need to make changes. It's in Handshake Client and Handshake Server TLS 1.3. Makes sense because the client doesn't yet know if it's a TLS 1.3 or um, 1.2 and 1.3. Mm. 
so supported curves well this is already a problem we need to pass the version into this um, right uh, there's probably other things Okay, so our supported versions always returned in order. Versions makes a list, then it goes through them in that order. Um, and then it has a bunch of logic to decide whether to remove them. So they're always in order. Let's document that. Um, Okay, because we're about to rely on that um, to check if TLS 1.3 is uh, enabled. Actually, I think, yeah, see, we're already so, um, doing it here. Although, what is that? We should probably so there's this version field in the client hello which was frozen because um uh, when we tried to deploy tls 1.3 like we as the collective community um things were rejecting client hellos that were higher so we cheated by always setting it to version 1.2 and then having a new extension for actually supported versions. So we should probably not be using that um, that anymore. Um, let's do something like uh, highest version. Uh, Wait, we already have max supported version? Hmm. Interesting. Uh, where is that used? Oh, a few places, actually. Okay, then we can just switch to using that. It's probably a little inefficient because every time it makes this new slice, but it's not time for uh, early optimizations like that. Uh, so let's do max version. that and like that and then we change everything that uses uh, verse actually we could even move this down and use hello dot verse so we remove uh, 
variable name and then anything that's using verse now should be using max verse instead okay so now that we have that we can pass it into curve preferences because the curve preferences will depend on the version now so Okay, there we go. Oh, hey, hi, Fox Baron. Um, and now let's go fix all the places that use curve preferences. Uh, supports curve will need to grow yeah oops i suppose it's on the config it could just call max version hmm curve preferences can but i bet supports curve is actually called somewhere where we've already selected a version which might be lower no here it's actually based on the config here i think we know the version actually yeah this is a key agreement file so this is for tls 1.2 only um yeah although i'm not a fan of splitting things like this supported curves should be based on the oh this is on the server on the server we are trying to figure out which curves do we support so yeah that will take knowing the version yeah yeah um the alternative was reaching into the client hello if it was on the client side but this is on the server side and the server has not decided whether it supports a curve this is actually exactly where it decides if it supports a curve because i don't like putting something in the client hello and then later comparing the response of the server with what we thought we put into the client hello i prefer to just go back to the cli client hello because maybe later we add some code that changes what goes into the client hello and we don't realize that we didn't change it upstream enough so yeah oh wait and this is another place where it's called which is oh the giant support certificate logic which god which however has a version okay we need to add it to version two okay so here is going to be verse uh, Actually, we know that version will never be TLS 1.3, but cleaner to just pass it uh, like that. And then here we pass, uh, where is this used? Hmm. 
I don't really want to pass um, that all the way in. So we're just gonna hard code version. Uh, that's a little hacky though. Um, that's fine. Where is this used? So here, where we definitely have the version in process client hello, and here. in support client certificates. So yeah, let's add a version here too. Annoying where the parameters just grow like this, but very well. Oops. Yeah, the version was already selected at this stage. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's keep going through the things that are broken now, which just need us to add the version for each of them. Mm. Do we have the version here? Ugh, we don't. Mm, not a fan of how this is. Wait. KA version, there we go. Yep. Version, version. Supports curve is done. Let's see if there are places we need to fix for curve preferences. There are. This one's fine, this one's not. Oh, actually here we're going to have to make changes anyway. Um, well, this is the server for TLS 1.3. So preferred group goes through the key shares. Actually, this might not have to change because only the client has to be a little smarter to send both key shares, I think. Um, yeah, give priority to groups with a key share. Yeah, I think on the server this will just work. Um, I think we already have a C dot verse here, which is actually TLS one three. Yeah, yeah, there we go. Okay. Why is there still a bunch of broken stuff? Oh, because. Something is not agreeing with um, go please. Okay, so we fixed curve preferences. Now, in theory, if we run the tests now, since we didn't change anything, they should still work. No, wait, that's not true. The default, the default is now. Um, a thing that's not actually supported. So no, that the, they would break uh, correctly. So 
let's <coughs> figure out how to add support for generating the client shares as a start. Okay, here is where it picks the preferred curve ID. It then picks the curve for the curve ID, it generates the EDH key, and then it makes the key shares. Like that. Um, and then it keeps hold on of that key so that it can then return it and use it to do the to do the exchange later. And I suppose there's also a place in the... Yeah. Let's go find out where that goes. Make client hello, find all references. Actually, there's only one, so we'll just jump to it. There's the ECDH key, which we'll have to store. It goes here. We'll have to store a kyber key right next to this in the future we'll have to do something a little more flexible because there might be multiple um, hybrids and stuff like that but for now that will do um, and uh, Yeah, we'll probably want to change all the places where this is used. Yeah, because for example, curve ID. This is all the hello retry stuff. Which would be a little annoying. Um, yeah, I think this is going to be our main guide. for doing this implementation. Do we want to just make a new type that is the uh, local key share? Yeah, let's do that. Um, I think we can put it in key schedule. This is not make client hello. This is in the hello retry. And this is in the process client hello, which makes sense. We should also check for the path that generates, um, that sends a hello retry. Okay, so let's make a type here, which is going to be, um, um, Key share. Key share already exists. Key share already exists. What's it? What's the key share type? Oh. Um. Key share. Private key. Naming is always hard. Um, what is Kishar used for? Oh, I see. It's the actual thing that goes into the message. Makes sense. Um, 
key here, private key, let's say. There we go. And we have our ML can import there. Let's put a curve ID on this. <clears throat> okay. Um. Actually, I'm not sure that's exactly how we're going to use it. That's not. It's pretty clear what's on it. Um, okay, so back to where we were generating it. Um, Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh. Okay, so for this one, we special case it as generating both uh, the curve ID. Um, oh no. Oh, we're going to have a problem with this. No, okay, I think I didn't know how. Um, so curve ID, we're going to put x to 5519 here, and then we'll also uh, do a, uh, 
mlcam768 dot new key from seed uh, because we need to uh, wait we don't have seed size oh yeah there we go because we want it to be based on this round here okay because the um, we use that for testing uh, to make the transcripts uh, reproducible um, new key from seed gets us the the capsulation key and an error so oh can probably figure it out okay um And then we need uh, to make two key shares. One of them is that's an interesting hallucination. One is the same as this, but with X for FL19, and the other one is with the concatenation. However, now time to remember what the difference is between Kyber and um, By the way, if you're interested in the um, uh, ML Chem package, this is a good article to read uh, because it's where I talk about the package that we're now using to integrate into Kurt And there's an appendix that explains how to do what we need to do. Uh, So this we don't care about, this we don't care about, this. Um, Cybertex used to be hashed into the shared secret. Okay, so it's only at the shared secret step that we need to care about the difference. Okay. There was something somewhere that said explicitly that that was okay. 
um, there you go. No, this is not a. There was a rule saying that you had to generate each of them independently. Here we go. And they relaxed that because, as you see now, we're reusing the same generation for both X2519 and the other. Um, we relaxed the requirement to allow the same key exchange value uh, for the same algorithm to be reused in multiple key fair entry records sent within the same client. Hello. There we go. As allowed by section three point two. Okay. <clears throat> um and then for the data here, we need to append to these bytes. Those bytes. Um, what kind are? How did one do that? Yeah, okay. Okay, I think this is it for the sending the client side. Uh, we special case this we made this into a different type that carries both and we're now sending two key shares yeah let's make sure that nowhere makes assumptions about this being of length one there we go <laughs> Um, yeah, we'll have to fix this. Ah, uh, so if the server selects the Ah, uh, this is annoying. If a server sends a hello retry request that selects the new, the hybrid, we can just reject it because we always send, for now we can just reject it. We'll have to make this smarter in the future. Yes, okay. Uh, Yeah, it would be caught by this. Anyway, we'll get to this as we fix the ECHE stuff. Um, this one supports the multiple ones, so the message code itself already supports it. And the server side seems to already support multiple key shares. 
after a hello retry request it has to be the um oh this is terrifying where is it checking that did we find a security vulnerability live on a stream i would hate that does it actually check yes it does okay Yeah, that that would have been annoying. Um, let's make it return it so that we don't get scared like that next time. There we go, much better. Okay, much better if in the future that changes, we moved the thing that makes an assumption that is closer to where the assumption is checked, which is here. Um, much more defensive. Okay, what were we doing before that? I think we are auditing if there are places that assume that there's only one key share. Uh, that assumption in the hello retry request is correct. Um, Uh, we could even make this a little cleaner by just There we go. Okay. <clears throat> so I think we're done on the client side. We just now need to clean up the fact that we changed the type of this and go through every place we use that ECDH key.
Okay. And if anybody has a better name for key share keys here, I'm actually all ears. Local keys? I don't know. Anyway, there. Now everything is broken, which is actually good because now we get to do a few checks. Um, let's see. Key her keys is nil, uh, or and is less than one. Um, And there might be an assumption somewhere that at least the ECDH part is present. So let's just assert that we can always relax it later. Oh, I should have loaded. Mm. Let's do something like there. And then let's break it again. At least this way we can go through each of... Well, that didn't work. Ah, because the lines moved and couldn't redo it. Okay, so... EC, so this, which one is this? Hello, retry request. Let's think about it, about that in a second. Hello, retry request. Process server hello. Okay. So here we're on the client. We select the TLS 1.3. Everything went well. The server comes back and um, tells us, yes, um, I'm down to... Um, um, so here, sent ID is the reason we did add the HS dot, um, key share keys curve ID. Okay, so this is just checking that the server selected one um, wait. No, this is broken because now we need a special case for this, which is kind of annoying, but and ah. Uh, so here we are checking if the thing the server selected is one of the key shares we sent. Um, right. Um, I guess. That's what we're supposed to check. So let's actually check that um, the painful way. Um, Alright, Copilot is nice for this sort of things. Um, 
we go through every every key share we send if we find that it's selected one that we yeah that's that looks right so this was this and that's done now this one and this one which i think are just these two establish handshake keys okay so Here is where we generate the, yep. And I assume that that's called right after the process server hello, right. Okay. So we know that everything is valid, that everything matches the key shares we sent. So now we need, uh, big all if i'm afraid uh to generate the shared key um right so which one is the if the group is the hybrid We do some stuff, otherwise we do this stuff. Um, actually, no, I think we start the same by using the ECDH side of it, which is why at the top we made sure that it's always uh, set, if that makes sense. Um, Um, although here, this might have to be just the first part. Um, so we do E C D H E peer, uh, data if, um, the group is x25519 blah then <clears throat> do we have a constant for that <clears throat> i don't think so Like a constant for how big a ECDH. Yeah, we should fix that. There's no way to know what the sizes of the various things are. Ah. Well, I mean, it's fixed in this case uh, because it says it right here. Thirty two bytes plus. So, yeah, let's just Yeah. Um, oh, we also have to fix wherever the server. <sighs> Do we just pull this out into functions? Let's do it locally here, then we try to do it on the server side. If we see it's the exact same code, then we pull it into a function. Um, that's dangerous. Um, supposed to be so this is the <coughs> server share right server share yeah um, which should be 32 plus ml can uh, 
uh, encapsulation key size, decapsulation key size, self size, self size, self -flex size. Um, ciphertext, yeah, 32 plus 1088, correct. Uh, do you have a way to return an error? Yeah, that's one. Okay. Yeah, this will probably require pulling out into a into a function. Uh, peer key does that. Shared key does that, and then we have another if block. Uh, we already checked that the size is right, so uh, here we have to do a decapsulation, so That should never happen, but you know, I. Why introduce a vulnerability when you can just add that another nil check just to be sure? Um, yeah, this is a bit spaghetti. We'll clean it up later, probably. I didn't realize that was exported. A was not supposed to be exported. Whoops. Right, because now it's a type. Uh, and export a. Whoops. Um. Oh, no, right. It's. Um, ML cam seven six eight dot decapsulate. The decapsulation key is the HS dot key share sky verb. The ciphertext is is this. And then that's it. Um ML cam shared share. Okay, um, just to help us with debugging a bit. Um, Hello, meet the Peter. Uh, pretty sure you swapped uh, Diffy and Helen places in ECDHE your data no I, I think it's right uh, the first 32 bytes are the um, um, oh but I'm not using it here we go um, and then the other half is Uh, the ML can um, uh, all right now um, we need to do the thing to turn a kyber into a um, um, uh, I'm fading uh, we need to turn the ML can thing into a kyber thing um oh um the variable name oh yeah you're right <laughs> uh 
Thank you. Um, so we make a chat pre. Okay, so H low um, new shake two fifty six H dot right uh, ML cam. Uh, then h dot write um, the cipher text, which let's just make a variable for it. Um, actually, this is probably much less confusing. Oh, actually, not only less confusing, it's shadowing. And then third key is the sum. Yeah. Okay. And we document it. Um, Okay, um, and third key shouldn't actually be that, but be appended. Yeah. Okay, I think this does the client side correctly. Um, yeah. Now, um, this we've done, this we've done. We did not do the hello reply request yet. And we didn't do the um, server side. Let's, let's do the client side. Okay, so if the server sent a key for extension selecting group, ensure it's a group we advertise, but did not send a key share for it, and send a key share for it this time. So what's happening here is that the server sends a hello retry request in because it says, nope, uh, I actually don't like the key shares you sent, uh, send me a key share for this other group. So curve ID, select the group, uh, curve OK. Send ID. Uh, right. So for this, we're going to use. Um, what are we going to use? All right, let's do this the right way. Um, So here we go through the supported curves we sent and make sure it's supported. Then, then we go through the key shares, right? Well done. Um, uh, Copilot, that was a good 
inference. Uh, we go through the key shares. If the key share is equal to the curve ID that they selected, what happens if the curve ID is zero? Oh, because you might have to send a hello retry request without changing the key shares. For example, because Uh, they want to disable PSK. No, wh why? Oh. Oh, here unnecessary address. So either it sets the selected group to something. Uh, or it sends the cookie. I see because um, hello return request is used for two things. One is I don't like the key shares. The other one is I don't actually, I'm under attack or something and I wanted to come back with this cookie to prove you're not just spamming client hellos. It's kind of not that much of a thing, but sure, let's, let's pretend we, yeah, we, we support it anyway. Okay, so, Okay, so here it's already only supporting um, ECDHE, which I think is correct. So um, There we go. Uh, so here we just need to make that up here keys. No, there we go. And we added this here so that when we'll do a pass to remove this, we'll find this code here and know that we need to do some work on it. I think this finishes the client side. Um, I think with the code as is, we can connect to a server that supports it. Hell, let's do it. Um, let's try it. Let's see if it works. Chances that it works first try. Um, I'll take uh, bets in the in the chat. Oh, we also need to add the go debug to to the go debug table. Uh, TLS Kaiser. I think it goes here.
we'll do this later, but I think this is all we needed to do too. Okay, let's check if there's anything still literally broken. There is not. Um, uh, I think there was a page to test it. Um, Alpha had one, I think. Okay. Ooh, hey. Nice. Sweet. Okay. Interesting. Is this what we're using? I think it's probably what we're using. Mm. Two five four nine seven. Two five four nine seven. There we go. Yeah, and we're using the, the new one. Uh, okay. Uh, so we fetched this page as part of a test with a client and we see what it returns. Let's see. Oops. Um. L Lol. Uh. Huh. Interesting. It uses uh, the trace. Nice. Okay. And then ju let's just. I used to work at Cloudflare. CDN CGI Trace is is a friend. Um, all right. Well, that's unfortunate. Ah. Oh, that's very annoying. Well, it's a good opportunity to check the go the bag works.
Oh, that's interesting. Um, what did we break? Hmm. Well, this is where I wish I had dig style arrow traces. Uh, who the hell knows? Uh, well. Before we leave it there. Um, good. Hmm. How did we get here? With the key shark is nil. Shadow the variable on line one four nine. Ooh, good catch. Damn, that was quick. But wait. What did I shadow? Like I see that it's not highlighting this, but where is the wait? I'm not seeing it. Oh, here with that. Yes. Uh, thank you. Yes. Uh, nice. Well, this is why we had the if. Um, Nice eye, I was just scrolling past it too. Uh, thank you. All right, let's see it again. Bad record Mac is a bad one. It means the keys are wrong. Oh, how are, oh, that's gonna be painful. Oh, the bug in that is gonna be. Well, it means the server is accepting our thing. So we're doing something wrong in uh we're doing something wrong in uh, uh here no nope. Not here. Uh, here is fine because otherwise it would reject it. Instead, it's accepting it, but then it's not like like the keys we compute are different. Um, because then the Mac fails. So we're doing something wrong here. So the first part of the third key, if there was an error there, we would fail there. So these were, this was right.
We write the shared key and the ciphertext. If the ciphertext was of the wrong length, we would have hit this error, which we don't. Well, I mean, also, let's test that. Yep, all right, the code bug works, and we didn't break everything else, which, <laughs> step forward, um, means we are taking this path, and that in that path, we're computing the key somehow wrong. Am I wrong about this thing? Ah, ha ha ha. That's missing. Um. Can I put in there? Yeah, I can slice it. I, I remember why there was something you couldn't slice like that. All right. Not quite there. Um, I'm not sure. Uh, we might need to write a test and make sure that this contraption here actually matches Kyber, which is going to be a little annoying to do. Um, I guess there are Kyber test vectors. Uh, so, and we only really need the one Kyber test vector. Uh, So that at least we find out if the mistake is in here or in yeah yeah let's move this stuff into um, key schedule so that we can test it uh, maybe that if statement isn't reached um, I think it is, but um, you know what? Good thing to check. Oh. Um. All right, so we put on. Kyber decapsulate 
which takes uh, the key and a CT. That's actually very right. Um, we can call this K. We can call that C. This is the K. That's C. That's C. Um, this returns that. Just return null and the error here. Okay, we put that in there, which anyway will be cleaner anyway. It goes the wrong place for that anyway. Okay. Um, are there test vectors in this spec, maybe? No, there are not. Um, okay, so now that we have this, let's figure out if this is correct. So we go to its tests and we find Where do we find a Kyber test vector? Um, we might have to run the... So the upstream provides a binary you can run to get test vectors, which is actually kind of annoying. Um, Uh, I put together test vectors for the ML chem stuff. <laughs> That's me, actually. Um, oh, I think the test vectors by Sophie Ah here maybe these have nope those are for ML Chem. Um nope. Uh, NIST provided some nice test vectors. Um, fine, we'll just generate them. Um, this is not a helpful way to provide.
I don't want to know. Uh, just give me a JSON file. Also, a binary that generates a bunch of uh, vectors, like 10,000 random vectors, not super useful, um, which is actually why in my ML can test vectors, I have intermediate values, which help you step through things. Um, specific edge cases. Um, and then for, uh, I run their programs and then I just hashed the output. Um, both the inputs and the, um, well, I tell you how to generate the inputs, documented it, and then hash the output so that you don't have to check in a binary or 10,000 uh, test vectors. You can just check in this hash, run the same algorithm yourself, and then check that the accumulated result is the same. I'm very fond of this trick, but if I start talking about uh, testing for cryptography libraries, we're gonna this is gonna turn into a, a live stream on um, testing cryptography libraries. So let's carry on. If you want to watch talk about testing cryptography libraries, I gave a couple of those actually. Uh, one at uh, Real World Crypto, and one at GopherCon um, 20, uh, 23 depending on whether you want the cryptography side of it or the Go side of it. The Go side of it was really more of, uh, um, oh, maybe there's tests in here. Um, was more of, um, uh, no one answer tests. All right, maybe we're in business. Um. Yes, we're in business. Okay, so this is Kyber 768 round 3, not the 90s version. So this is this is it. All right. Okay, so we're just testing decapsulation. So we're gonna need the decryption key. Um, um, seven six eight dot. Actually, let's use the seed. Uh, no, I don't think seed means the same thing. So actually new key from extended encoding. There's a whole discussion right now whether uh, keys should be encoded um, like that or, or what, but... Um... It's irrelevant to our test right now. Uh, also, let's document where we took it from. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I got lost. There we go. Escape CT.
All right. Good. Okay. At least we know that's what's wrong with it. Mm. Now, why is it wrong? <sighs> so first, let's make sure it's not doing a rejection. Um, we go into the decapsulation code and we make sure that this is not happening. Uh, because if it's rejecting the ciphertext, it will not return an error, but just return random data, which is called implicit rejection, which is hotly debated whether it's actually important for security. And if it is, there are so many things that could leak the fact that it was rejected, so it's actually poor security. But if it's not important for security, then it's it makes you know developers pull their hair out when they're doing stuff like this. So eh, anyway. Controversy aside, um, this one is supposed to be uh, so K prime is the rejection value, I think. No, no, the rejection value is K out. Um, well, the thing that hashes Z and the ciphertext is the random rejection value. So K out is the rejection value and K prime is the valid one. So we want to know if it's equal. Well, let's just print line. Uh, and oh God, X, X, X. Um, is this the right file in the vendor folder? Let's see. One. So they are the same. So K prime is being, um, so it's not doing a rejection. Okay. So we know that we're not getting K out because this is one and constant I copy does the copy if V was one, so K prime is getting copied into K out. So we know that the cer the CT is getting through uh, correctly. So now the question is, what are we doing wrong in the post processing? And for that, we've got to go open the Kyber submission. Uh, I was hoping not to have to dive this deep. Also because they changed all the terms and I'm familiar with the terms in the uh, final, not in this. Hmm. Okay. Here. The PKE should not have changed. So we compare what we do here in the capsulate with what's done there. So here we do the PKE decrypt, then we hash it with. Uh, H, which is, uh, I use the letters in the spec to make it easier to review against the spec, but that also means that without a spec it's actually kind of hard. Uh, oh, it's the hash of the uh, public key. Um, so it hashes to get a message and hash of the public key. Does it do the same thing here? Yes. Hashes message, 
and we G, which is SHA3512. Uh, it gets out K prime and R, same as here. Um, then it reda redoes the and if they match it returns the kdf of h of c k1 concatenated with h of c god damn it yeah all right that's probably it ah Let's figure out what the hell H is. A pretty good uh, paper to read for how they explain things. There we go. Chat re. Wait. Is G the same as we just looked at? Oh, KDF is shake two, uh, 256. Um, and that's at three to fifty six. Also, I think that's a shake that just reads those thirty two. It doesn't truncate them. Um, because the output of the KDF used to be configurable and then it became exactly 32 so I think this is actually wrong because we need to use the properties of shake to generate yeah I think this will still be broken naturally because we're reading a certain number of bytes and then we're reading 64 bytes out and then keeping 32 which I think is wrong uh, so let's try this first with the SHA3256 here Oh, this is the thing that I was preparing for earlier. All right, let's test this. I think it will still fail. Oh. Oh. That maybe reading is the same. Oh. Huh. Okay, anyway. Better... not do this all right should probably go patch fix uh fix ml cam blog appendix love when doing something generates a endless list of to do's uh Okay. Yep, I think we've. I think this is right now. Uh. 
um, or why the out thing? Because it's like it's kind of ugly to generate 64 bytes with some and then slice it down to 32 bytes when shake is an um, uh, expandable output function, so it can generate as many bytes as you want. So it can just you can just keep reading from it. So there's no reason to read 64 bytes and then slice it down to um, uh, to 64. I actually kind of expected it to embed into the output how many you've you've read, but I guess that would uh, that's a design choice that they could have or made or not made. Um, yeah. Okay. Ah, <sighs> and now the the other test. Yes, wait. Yes. All right, we got it. Could be worse. 200 lines. Um, this is only the client side, though. Uh, we still need to do the server side. Mm. Huh. Also, go debugs have a rule where, have a feature where they expose metrics for um so that you can know how many times it's doing something different because of the go debug so for example you upgrade to go 123 um you keep your um thing at go 122 and you look at the metrics to know which ones are causing um different behaviors and Um, we usually try to make those more useful because, for example, say that mm, you realize that Kyber does break your production uh, code, and so you decide to do something like deploy Go123, update the Go mod to Go123, but you set a Go debug line, um, which keeps the old behavior of um, uh, of uh, of TLS Kyber. So TLS Kyber equals zero. Then you have this metric that you can use to check if at some point you stop using it. Um, imagine it for something else. Say it's for SHA-1 uh, in X509, like verifying certificates with SHA-1. Uh, you would have a metric that gets incremented every time we verify the certificate with SHA-1 so that you can deploy with um, uh, X509 SHA-1 equal one which overrides the default behavior, which is to turn it off. And then you look at the metric. If the met you deploy to production, if the metric stays at zero, you can remove the go debug because you're not actually verifying any um, SHA-1 certificates. Well, if the metric is not zero, that means you are um, verifying SHA-1 certificates and should probably fix that before you remove the go debug so you don't break production. Here, it's kind of hard to think what the flag would be though on the client because on the client every time we send um we don't know if the server would have selected it or not so on the client every connection is a hit on that api on the server we could instead flag every time that the client said they supported it and we did not select it because of the go debug. I'm not sure it's very useful though because it will get mixed with the client side. And also it's not a very useful production metric because like do your clients use this 
experimental new thing is not an interesting data point because it will probably increase over time, not decrease. It's useful for deprecating things, old things. Like, uh, say we are about to deprecate, um, to remove from the defaults three deaths. Um, there, the, 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 the metric is super useful because you set the go debug, uh, you override the go debug, or you keep go 122 in your, um, in your mode. Uh, and then every time there's a 3 desk connection, the metric will get increased. So if you see that metric not at zero, you know that you're about to break some clients by doing that. Um, I think I'll just make this one opaque. Um, Dimitri, if you're still um, around, do you agree with me? Do you, do you think this is a good um, case for um, uh, opaque? Where did we, how did we do it for the TLS? Um, oh, uh, I'm just wondering if there is a meaningful um, metric for the non-default in this case, where we would, on the server, we could actually tell them when a client would have selected the new thing, but didn't because they turned it off with the go debug TLS Skyber equals zero. But on the client, we can't. Um, and anyway, it doesn't feel like a very useful one because like clients might start supporting this in the future. It's useful for deprecations because when you're deprecating something, you want to know if you have clients that still use it and then you slowly and painfully upgrade them and then you figure out when that number is low enough, you, you, you switch and break them. But this is not about breaking anybody. It's not super useful to know that there are clients that will start using it if you enable this. Um, so to me, it doesn't feel worth the work and complexity to document what that, what that is. Um, yeah, I think I mostly convinced myself that this is okay to have opaque. Um, I'm going to open a window because I'm starting to feel the lack of oxygen. <sighs> okay, so we have um, yeah. Okay, so Dimitri is saying in chat that um, to a first thought looks uh, sounds uh, like the better place to start with opaque. Can agree. Um, Tara is saying um, it feels weird to have the good bag affect the server. I mean, sort of. Um, yeah, exactly. You might have clients that break when you enable that, and that would be a thing that breaks when you upgrade from Go122 to Go123. So uh, we like to use go debugs to make sure that the upgrade path is as smooth as possible for upgrading the toolchain so, so that you can up upgrade the toolchain cleanly and then uh, only later upgrade the Go uh, line and get as little uh, breakage as possible. Okay, so let's see. Um, we've done the client side. Uh, we now need to do the server side. On the server, I wonder where we're doing it on the server at all. Not actually sure. Um,
it's oh we can get there by searching where we are using all right let's close some stuff and then let's find where we are using generate ECDH key and that's where it's done in the server okay so process client hello stuff 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 Uh, it gets here by the way um are you folks uh picking up noise from from outside okay so here it goes through our own curve preferences then it looks if it matches a key share um accent and if it matches a key share um it will mark it as the selected group and on the server i think all that logic doesn't need to change the client sends the thing we support the thing we select it great um and if it's not in the client supported curves um we break out interesting we actually don't check if if it's if we support one of the key shares we exit immediately without checking that it is in the client hello supported curves um that's wrong Because we go through the key shares first, because even if we have a preference order, we'll still honor the key shares first, because that way we avoid the, the round trip, um, what it's saying here. So actually here it's missing a bit of code, annoyingly. Um, um, Uh, do we have this license package now? Which contains... Yeah, I should probably start using contains in a bunch of places, shouldn't I? I feel like there was at least one place where we could have done that. Um, okay, so contains... Uh, takes first the slice, then the element. So we want supported curves to contain selected group. <laughs> yeah, mm, copilot generated for us before exactly. Um let's find it. Um uh well, all right, in a second. Um so contains that um and I guess this could turn into a contains, right? Um Um, well, here I don't think it's useful to do it because we need the KS. So we could use contains func, but that only returns a bool. Um, and we need it to also return the KS itself. 
feels like that could be a function that you could have a generic version for. Something like a select. Um, maybe there is one. Uh, binary search doesn't sound like it. We need something that returns a E. I think it would be called find. And it would take a function that returns a boolean and tells you if that's the one. Which I guess is not super. It's probably better to write it like we did. Um, yeah, these are nice. Yeah. Index func? Well, yeah, I guess it returns the index. Uh, and then we use that index, but we have to check if um, if it's minus one. Uh, let's see how it would look like. Um, okay, I uh, slices dot. Um, Index func key shares func. Uh, oh, it's a func i because it uses the. No, it's a func e. Um, ks um, key share uh, ks group equal equal preferred group. If ki different from minus one, set it to group is preferred group, find key share is ki, and then we break out. All right, no, that, uh, that's actually nicer. Um, uh, but it's missing this part. This logic is not right. This is saying it gives priority to the groups with a key share, but it's not what it's doing, is it? I think this is broken. Because it's still going through them curve preference by curve preference. And we'll first check if it's in the key shares, which was actually useless. Only introduced the thing we are now, the lack of a check that we now have here. But it, it would still hit this before it hit the key share for the other thing. Yeah, nesting loops like that made it wrong. I think it's wrong. Oh, damn it. Um, I have a vague memory of noticing this before. Did I file an issue for it? Which one is this? Hmm. 
Means there's no overlap between key share and supporter groups. Oh, this one is the one we were fixing up earlier. There we go, yeah. Clients must not offer any key share entry values for groups not listed in the client's supported groups extension. Servers may check for violation of these rules and abort the handshake with an illegal parameter alert if one is violated. Access the server offering key share and supported group extensions with no overlap. Yeah, huh. All right, so this one is also an issue. Um, oh, this is going to be annoying. Um, uh, let's see. Um, this is going to have conflicts when we clean it up. Ah. Uh, Right. All right. So let's. Um, uh, very annoying. Um, yeah, it should be two for loops that check for presence into the preferences, not the other way around. Uh, okay. That's, why did we change anything at all here? Um, yeah, actually I think we can split this out without conflicts because Oh, and we changed the type of key shares. All right, we'll clean it up in a sec. Um, right. Okay, so the let's let's do the right lodge. Then we'll think about how to fix it. How to fix the? We need to put um, ref. Preference list. Wait, we already have one. Huh. Because we are doing something similar up there. Um, preferred groups. Um, and that's that. Then we have a uh, four. Um. I actually think here's let's not do the index func thing. Um or comma uh key uh, share range client low key shares. Um here we do the, the check. Um and then we do if sizes contains preferred group. Uh, KS group, uh, then selected group is that, find key share is that, and we break. Great. Then we have another for loop, which we put behind if selected group is zero. Uh, for comma range um, if slices contains preferred group supported curve um if it's still zero then we break out i think this is the right logic now
And we have to write a test for that. Uh, um, well, and we'll have to clean it up anyway because this will not work. But let's split it out just so that we. Um. Yeah, we'll have to edit that. Actually, it... this never works, but this time maybe it will. So we need to change that not to pass that. And then the key shares is still the same. Supporter group is still the same. Client key share is still the same. Actually, the rest I think is the same. Yeah. It will cause a conflict, but whatever. Oh, it will not. We'll just add this and then we'll have the diff. Okay. So this is the patch for that, right? So it used to do one loop on code preferences. It now does two loops. One on key shares with a check here. And one if it contains uh wait we should still go in our preference order between the key shares though so this is not it um we should go through the preference group order um then check if it's ah oh, that's annoying Ugh. um So now we have to do the contains index thing. The contains the index func thing. Um okay, so if ki is minus one, we continue. Then it we check that supported curves contains actually let's do Um. All right, now I think the logic is right. We go through our preferred Nope. <laughs> oh god. Um because we still want to prefer our prefer order preference order. So if sizes contains Ah, 
now I think it's right. I'm getting less confident by the minute. Um, we go through our preferred groups once, the whole list. For each of them, we check if there is a key share that has that group. If not, continue. If we find it, we check that it's also in supported uh, curves. Um, if it's not, we return an error. If it is, we set the selected group and the client key share. And we break. Then we go through the, if we didn't find one, we go through the prefer preferences again. This time we check if the supported curves contain this group. And if we found it, we break. If we still didn't find it, it's a handshake failure. Uh, yeah, all right, I think it's right now. And yes, there there is indeed a reason this was wrong in the first place. <laughs> Um, so this is the patch, while well, this is wait. Oh, yeah, that's the hello retry logic. Um, Okay. Oof. Uh, so we don't com commit that, but wait, I... we commit that, we edit that because we're using, we need to take this out because that's a thing we just changed. I think we're not using anything else new here. So we take that hunk and then we just finish it like this and then crypto TLS. Um, uh, group selection logic. The intention was to follow our preference order, but um, um, giving priority to key shares um, to avoid the run dry request round trip. In practice, we were only following the preference order. Um, Um, okay. Also, we were not checking that the selected group is, um, uh, in the supported list if we found it in key shares first. Um, this was only a May. Fixes that. Um, ironically, the only thing the the ineffective key share preference uh, logic. was doing was introducing that bug. Fun. Um, it's missing tests. Uh, to do delete bug, add tests, do not submit. The bot actually sees the do not submit and respects it. Okay, and now 
the changes only that we added that. Okay. Back to us. We are trying to add server-side support for this thing. Uh, so pick the uh, key exchange. All right, so it gets selected. Once it's selected, if the it selects one but the client share is new, it does the hello retry request, and it gets a new client share out of the hello retry request. And I think we already looked at the hello retry request and we liked what it was doing. Uh, in the hello retry, it needs to send only one. Uh, how does it pick which ones? It does it in, based on the selected group, which will be the highest preference one for us that didn't have, because if it went through this, it would have stopped there. So instead, it will be the highest preference, the first one from this list that's also in the supported curves. So it might be the... Um, the hybrid one and here is the code we need to fix yep we need to write an encapsulate version of it mm. um so first we need to split this out into from Kyber shared secret, uh, which needs to take uh, K and C, um, and I think it doesn't need to return an error. There we go. Um, and then we make uh, right. Generates and potential error. Uh, encapsulate returns ciphertext shared key and error, right? Uh, ciphertext shared key error. I should not have had um, Copilot generate this. It does not what the fuck it's talking about. Um, I generally only use Copilot for like error messages and, and generating things that generics didn't provide yet, like before. Um, so K is going to be SS. That's C. No new variables. Fair enough. Okay, let's extend the tests for that. Uh, actually, encapsulate is always randomized, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, to, we can test that by... Um,
Um, we are gonna want an encapsulation key, which we could just generate. Um, Uh, 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 uh. And then we test it against Kyber the capsule, which we know is right. Uh, Okay, so now we have the encapsulate side of it. Um, uh, this needs to change quite a bit. Um, because remember that it's not symmetrical, uh, what we were saying earlier. Uh, also, I have dinner in like an hour. All right, we're so close. Uh, let's try getting there. Um, uh, 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 uh. Bye, buried in the ground. Thank you for the for the chat. Um, doo -doo -doo. Okay, so. Right. Uh, so we need to first move this up because we can't generate the data with the encapsulation logic. Um, This is different because here we only generate the one key share, but the data is actually a combination of the two. One second, sorry. Right. Uh, let's just hack it in here for now, and then we'll decide whether to move it out. So. Here we have to, I think the time to uh, move it out will be when we also implement the hello let's try request because that will will have to be able to generate for arbitrary options. Um, well, for now, it, the whole thing is too as asymmetrical with the client sending two and the server only accepting one and, and so on. Mm. So 
So basically we have to Okay, let's go with this. Uh, e C D H group. Selected group. If selected group is X or nine, then E C D H group is going to be X to five five one nine. Um, and in the else we put this okay Or I guess we just move it below here. Okay. Then we generate this with the ECH group. We do the whole peer key thing, except that the data here Um, is going to be just the first 32 bytes. If um, uh, uh, So the client side needs to be thirty two plus one one eight four. Well. Uh, because it's called encapsulation key size. The fact that mm, the Copilot doesn't have um, context information always just baffles me. I think we're not closing. Uh... There we go. Well, that's not working. Ah. Is a uh, developing in the standard library specific issue. One one eight four. Okay. Okay. So we do the thing with the ECDH data. Um, and then finally we hack a horrible. <laughs> If here, not sure I'm a fan of all of this, all of this, but let's roll with it for a second. Actually, we can move this up here. Okay, now we need to run the uh, Kyber Parrot is going to be uh, Kyber Encapsulate um, on this. 32 the rest uh, 
and that returns the ciphertext, the shared secret, and the error. So, no, that would be uh, still an invalid. Actually, I don't think that can return an error. I think it only returns an error if the length is wrong. No, that's not true. Uh, it might be invalid. Yeah, oh yeah, that, that, that was a whole topic of discussion. Um, so that one actually returns an error. So invalid Kyber. Okay. That can't be called C. And that's going to be the Kyber shared. Um, and we append to the server share data, the cipher text. I think this is it. Could have been uglier, I guess. It's just one if replacing stuff there and one if replacing Append, doing the work and appending the stuff there. I think this is right. Uh, testing this is a little more annoying. I guess I could just make a server that serves something on localhost, try to connect to it with Firefox, see what happens. Since now I support it. Yeah, let's do that. Um, um, okay, so... Mm -mm -mm. Uh... I guess I could just make a HTTPS server. Yeah. Handler. Do we have the key exchange? Version handshake did resume cipher suite. No, we don't have it. Um, that's annoying. Uh, we'll have to use Firefox to check what it's what it's using. Uh, we would have it in the client hello. Um, we should probably expose that. I'll make a proposal for Go124. Actually, I made the stringer thing just because I thought you, there was a way uh, to get the negotiated uh, uh, curve ID. All right, took a note. Yeah, you can get in the client hello info, but no. No, annoying. Um, so. 
Yeah, actually, at 404 will be enough. Interesting. Um, it was already in the Firefox one. Why? Uh, it doesn't matter. Um, oh, hey, Roland. Um, uh, yep, this is what you'll be reviewing on Monday. You you could have followed the, the thing. Actually, it started a little too early. Uh, and then you wouldn't have had to review it. Wait, that's a bad idea. That's how bugs slip through, isn't it? Yeah, no, I think that's a bad idea. Uh, but yeah, uh, also, uh, I owe you the ECH reviews. I think um, I'll get to that uh, like in parallel uh, to this, either tomorrow or or Monday. Uh, pretty sure we can land them. Um, right, uh, go dev test, uh, run test. Uh, did I really not have anything to call test server? Apparently. Uh, now deny because... Wait. Why does it return? Oh, um, it will want the. Oh, so it's dash key. But I think it's CDs into. Um... Okay. So now we connect. Reset is not great. Hmm. Right, it actually, yeah, that was stupid. Um. Okay, so that's running. Lol. I thought I had this forced. Why is the issue unknown? Well, that's a make cert bug. Make cert with Firefox. Okay, we connected. Now the question is, did we connect with Oh yeah, Roland, you might have missed it, but uh, while uh, looking at this, uh, I found another bug, like uh, classic, not that, this. Um, that will also be a thing you'll have to uh, review on Monday. Um, yeah, it, it was absolutely just not doing the thing it was supposed to do. It was not preferring key shares, which is actually kind of bad. It means we're doing hello retry requests. If anybody puts 
P256 ahead of X2519. Like, I think right now, if you make a Go server that says curve preferences, P256 first, X2519 second, any client that connects and sends a X2519 uh, key share, which is most of them, will get a hello retry request, just like hard. Yeah, not great. Um, whoopsie. Um, all right, network, reload. Um, excuse me. Ah. Uh? <laughs> uh, <laughs> what is happening? Oh. Interesting. Yes! Look at that! The server works too. Nice! Alright! Client works, server works, tests not written, but um, like uh, Ron was saying, there are um, there are probably BOGO tests for that, so uh, I'll do that. Um, I'll just check if there are when I'm submitting uh, and make sure that we have like a self-negotiating test. Um, and oh, hey, Strad. Um, Ron is saying, wonder if there is an existing BOGO case for this, possibly one of the ones I blanket disabled when turning on the integration. Maybe it would be nice to to find out. Uh, I'll also write tests you know, our own, but actually, if there are BOGO tests, I'm all in for starting to delegate things to BOGO instead of uh, carrying on our own, own tests. Uh, you need to add support for the dash curves plug in the BOGO shim, but I don't think you will actually need to wire anything up. Um, it will just enable the cases. Good, yeah. Uh, for anybody else following, uh, well, Roland is the maintainer of the Go Cryptography standard libraries, uh, and um, Bogo is a test suite um, of the te the test suite of Boring SSL, which is another TLS toolkit, and it's actually a fork of an old version of Crypto TLS from Go, but with so many like tweaks added to make it possible to make it do broken stuff, for example, and. It's used to write a bunch of tests, and it tests things through a shim, which means you can actually use it to test things that are not boring SSL. Um, and we've meant to add support for that for a, a long time, and now uh, Ron added um, a support for testing uh, crypto TLS with uh, Bogo. But the first round, we just you know, he just added um, a support for all the things that we're passing and then over time we'll go over things and remove uh, skips for uh, a bunch of things. And maybe there was a test in there that would have caught this, who knows. Um, um, yeah, so th the shim will need uh, the dash curves option uh, so that there's a way to tell um, our go, uh, go uh, implementation what to um, what to use. Do you know if there's also a shim flag for which key shares to send? Uh, because I think to test this... No, this was a server bug. This was a server bug. So... Yeah, so arguably there should be a test for this in Bogle that, that checks that when it connects sending yeah, I guess if the curves flag of the shim is considered a preference order, maybe Bogo had something that put the key share group last in the curves flag order and checked that it was still selected. Maybe they do, maybe they, they don't. Um, oh, um, for the Twitch feed, uh, Strad is pointing out that my camera is hiding the thing that made me happy, which is this. Um, and um, you need key, you need me 
I'm not sure how to pronounce that. Um, th thank you. Uh, and uh, um, it has an expected key share option that some cases have um, been it. Got it. Oh, that's not a Y, that's a V. I see. Uh, I have a tiny little screen on which I see um, a chat and the, the dashboard in the bottom left. Um, that's where you see me looking at. Um, and it's small and low resolution. Um, yeah, so yeah, maybe Bogo had a test uh, case. We should, we should look for that. Folks, after three hours and a half, I think I am most done um this file we're going to delete because it's not actually like this was just to run a couple um smoke tests uh we added client server support integrated uh, integrated um the go debug we have the docs i think this is it uh, let's make a comment just so we don't lose it um uh the doc changes on curve id the new curve id point the change there um the doc change on there the logic that actually selects which one is the preferred we had to wire version through uh, some stuff this is generated code uh handshake client we removed the, we made a new type to hold the private keys. Um, cleaned up a bit how versions are tracked there. This is the client side stuff that actually sends two um, key shares if the curve ID is um, the X255191. Um, yep. Yeah, um, this actually checks that the selected one by the server is amongst the ones we sent, um, and it punts on. Oh, this is for the header retry request, which. We ignore because for now it's not necessary because we always send a key share if we support the thing. Um, and if somebody were to force the force it by putting in curve preferences an undocumented number, we'll still hit that error. Um, oh, this is the one where we could have used uh, generics. Let's go in there and use generics. Um. Oh, here too, naturally. Um. If slices dot contains um H S L O Q shares ID send a uh, unnecessary. Hello, try key share. There we go. Why is it wrong? Oh, uh, because this is going to be the um, the function, right? Because it's KS group, yeah. Contains func. There we go. Um, not shorter, but arguably cleaner. Uh, we can also replace this while we're at it. Um, curve OK is just HSLO supported curve contains. We lost that exclamation point, right? Yeah. Supported curves, curve ID. Yeah. 
there's probably so many more uh, all over the place but let's only do it to the ones where we've touched uh, if not uh, and this is also going to be a slices dot contains func um, hs loki shares func key ks key share return ks equal equal group There we go. We'll come back for that. Um, this is the server side. More routing version through. Uh, more routing of the version. This is also the server side. Wait, the one above, what was it? No, this was the client side, the actual uh, processing of the uh, server hello, while this is the processing of the client hello on the server. Um, this is, we changed for better safety. Uh, yeah, this is stuff we reshuffled for better safety. These are small changes I had made earlier. And that's the encapsulate, decapsulate um, Kyber stuff. And that's the test for that. And this is the go debug. Crypto TLS implement um, Is the stuff we just added that uses license and now code review mail uh, no auto submit no try bot yet because it's almost certainly broken and whip work in progress with a reviewer of Roland hi Roland we send them just to make sure that if my laptop dies I don't have to recover it from the video on demand on <laughs> um, on here and we've got two cls and i think it's time for me to go to dinner folks this has been fun uh i should really do this more often why do i not do this more often it gets me productive it's fun uh it's it's a useful thing to publish and put out there anyway um remember to mm, subscribe or whatever it's called uh, in um follow um, if you want to get the notifications when uh, I go live because I'm kind of I, I'm hoping I'm going to start doing this more often but I'm definitely not going to do this on a schedule so your only chance for catching it is turning on notifications um, for, when I, uh, for when I start so yes, remember to follow uh, and I think here uh, are my blue sky and the newsletter and if anybody has questions, now's the time. Um, and yeah, Roland, talk to you on Monday. Uh, hopefully I'll have, by the time you wake up, I will have the ECH reviews. Uh, I'll play the um, time zone uh, advantage here. Yeah, good to see you too, Dimitri. Um, Remind me to tell you about the cursed interactive TLS message builder I wrote after handwriting one too many test messages. Oh no. Oh no. Okay, I'm I'm curious. <laughs> oh interactive TLS message builder. That's interesting. Wait, does it ask you questions and generate code? I'm curious. Um, you'll tell me on Monday, actually. Um, yes. Um, also, huh? First time that viewers go up during the the stream uh, as opposed to down. I guess 
we all really like TLS, more likely people were waking up in SF. Um, oh, it's JavaScript. I, I'll i find out on Monday. I think it is time for me to go to dinner. Folks, all right. If there are no other questions, if there are no questions, um, I think I'm going to head off. Have a good weekend.